licensed video games have a reputation for being absolutely terrible, and gamers that want their money's worth out of the games they buy tend to avoid them like the plague. For good reasons, too, as licensed video games tend to suck pretty harshly. Yes, licensed video games have a long and storied history of being pretty frigging terrible. But not all of them are, and in fact there are some licensed games that are actually pretty good, and dare I say it, even great. And that's what we're taking a look at today, the licensed video games that actually didn't suck. And yes, there's enough of them to make a full list. You shouldn't be so cynical. That's my job. Banana! Woohoo! Boing! 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 Banana! The first game on our list is Transformers War for Cybertron, a game that I have a bit of a personal story with. You see, I absolutely hate this game, but not because it's bad, no, it's actually an extremely good game. It plays well, has a pretty long and interesting campaign, and has some fun multiplayer. It's basically Gears of War with giant robots blowing each other up. No, I hate this game because when I played it, I was a young, impressionable 10-year-old who thought Transformers were the coolest frigging thing in the world, and a video game that let me play as a Transformer and blow up other Transformers sounded pretty amazing. So I rented it, played it, loved it, and my impressionable 10-year-old brain thought, cool, licensed video games must be great. So I went out and played more of them. I went out and played the Wii game for Wally. My 10-year-old heart was broken, and Transformers War for Cybertron set me up for that heartbreak by not sucking. So thanks, High Moon Studios. You guys crushed a little 10-year-old boy's heart by making it the happiest 10-year-old boy heart ever, and then revealing to him that most licensed games are actually pretty terrible. The next game on our list is Deadpool, which coincidentally enough was also developed by High Moon Studios, which means they're pretty much the only dev team that knows how to make a good licensed game. Not really, because this is the last High Moon game on our list, but still, two in a row is pretty impressive, I think. Now I'll admit, Deadpool isn't the best game ever from a gameplay perspective. Sure, it's fun to play, but it gets a little repetitive once you get into the latter half of the campaign, and there's not a whole lot of replay value to it once you beat it. But Deadpool is on here for one reason and one reason only. It sticks to the source material it's based off of better than most any other game could possibly hope to do. And by that I mean Deadpool is absolutely frigging hilarious. It captures all the ridiculous, insane, who could have ever possibly thought of that without being on drugs kind of humor that the comic books became popular for, and then has it all be voiced by Nolan North, who, might I add, was absolutely born to play Deadpool. And in case you don't believe me, I'm going to show you one of my personal favorite scenes from the game. Here you go. Hmm. How much C4 is this going to take? No more than 20 ounces. What? Oh, I hate the metric system! How much in American? Well, let's see. You carry the seven... Uh... Dude, fuck math. Just use all of it. I rest my case. Deadpool is one of the funniest games I've played in a long time. The next game on our list is an old one that goes all the way back to 2004. Spider-Man 2, released for the PS2, original Xbox, and GameCube way back in 2004. Now at the time, I think Spider-Man 2 might have actually been the best licensed game around. It had a huge, wide-open New York City that let you climb up everything, web-swing all over, beat the living crap out of random street thugs, it had collectibles all over the city, it had a long campaign, lots of stuff to do, and sure, some of the random missions that would pop up along the streets were pretty repetitive, and some of them were kind of dumb, and the voice acting was hilarious for unintentional reasons, but it was still a great game at the time, and definitely one of the best licensed games that had been out then or now. Number 7 is a game from around the same time as Spider-Man 2, Lego Star Wars. Not the second one, but the first one. Now, admittedly, most of the LEGO games have been pretty excellent, with a handful of select exceptions that most of you will know what I'm talking about, so I'm not even going to name them. 
but LEGO Star Wars gets special credit just for being the first one. It introduced us to what seemed like quite possibly one of the weirdest and probably worst ideas we'd heard in a long time, mixing Star Wars and LEGOs and making a video game out of it. Admittedly doesn't sound like the most promising formula, but it turned out extremely fun. It had co-op that made the game infinitely more enjoyable when you were playing with friends, and it allowed parents and kids to play a game together that was actually fun for the parents as well as the kids. And it spawned a giant mega franchise that puts out, what, three games a month? Four games a month now? Somewhere around those lines? Number six is the entire Empire of Tom Clancy games, or as those of you who are fans of Ubisoft's E3 Expos might know him as, Tom Clancy. I do 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 do. Sorry for that. Had no choice. Was begging to be made. Anyways, this might be cheating a bit because it's an entire, fr actually several franchises of games as opposed to one game, but only because they've all been really pretty good. Ubisoft has a huge library of games under the Tom Clancy name, but the three most well-known franchises are Ghost Recon, Rainbow Six, and Splinter Cell, all of which have spawned some excellent games. The most recent Tom Clancy game, Splinter Cell Blacklist, released last year and was pretty well received. In fact, some research I did on the internet suggested that a lot of people may consider it to be one of the best Splinter Cell games in a long time. Likewise, Rainbow Six Vegas was, for the longest time, considered to be one of the best first-person shooters out there. And Ghost Recon pretty much started the tactical shooter genre as we know it. Now, admittedly, a lot of people kind of forget that Tom Clancy games are licensed titles. I kind of forgot myself until I started doing research for this video. But the fact of the matter is they are, so those of you about to go trolling the comments that Tom Clancy games aren't licensed because I know someone's probably going to do that, shut up. Yes, they are. I win. Go away now. Game number five on our list is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Now, admittedly, this game is a little bit close to my heart. After all, I was already a huge fan of the comic books and the movie when this game came out. But, if you think I might be biased, don't take my word for it. Do a quick Google search and you'll find that it's not just me. Most people were pretty satisfied with Scott Pilgrim vs. The World when it came out, and understandably so. Strictly from a gameplay perspective, it's a pretty fun side-scrolling beat-em-up with some RPG leveling elements and four-player co-op that makes the game infinitely more fun and infinitely easier. But if you approach it as a fan of the franchise itself, like I did, you'll find that the game is one of the best examples of faithfulness to the source material out there. The game is absolutely chock-full of references to the comics and movie. For starters, the sprite style itself matches the comic books perfectly. The environments are littered with references to old beat-em-up games, the Scott Pilgrim comics, there's the chiptune soundtrack, and that's all probably part of what makes this game so good. You can tell that the developers just had fun making it. It wasn't a slog, it was something they enjoyed doing, and you can tell that, and it helps make the game more fun. Plus, I never get tired of picking up some thug that I just knocked down and beating his friends over the head with his body. Which sounds pretty sadistic when I say it out loud, actually. Number four on our list is Kingdom Hearts 2. When Kingdom Hearts 2 released on the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 in 2005, it was following up the first Kingdom Hearts, obviously, which was one of the most beloved games of the generation. Fans' expectations were high that the follow-up would live up to their enjoyment of the previous game, and fortunately when it came out it clearly did. Just look at the Metacritic scores for it from critics and users alike. This game was almost universally praised by everyone who played it. In fact, it's one of the few licensed games to actually be frequently list in best of all time lists for video games period, and actually won several Game of the Year awards when it came out. Which is no small feat for any video game to accomplish, but for a licensed game to achieve that is even more impressive. 
Number three is Batman Arkham City, which is a more recent game on our list than most other games I've mentioned so far. Now, some people would argue that Arkham Asylum is the better game just because it came first, but Arkham City took literally everything that Asylum did and made it better. It refined the gameplay and combat, it added in a huge open world, one of the biggest in recent memory, with absolutely tons of side quests to do, integrated an excellent story with some fantastic voice acting, which just so happened to include Mark Hamill as the Joker, which is always good, and happened to be a pretty gorgeous game to boot. If that's not compelling enough proof for you, just look at how many games in the last couple of years have directly cribbed their gameplay style straight from Arkham City. The list is a lot more than you might think. Arkham City is also remarkable for being one of the few truly good Batman games out there in general, as Batman has had a pretty spotty track record with video games as a whole. He had some good ones back in the early 90s, and then pretty much crap from then on out, which made the Arkham games even more refreshing. They showed that not only could licensed video games be some of the best of the year they come out in, but a Batman licensed video game can be one of the best of the year it comes out in. Number two is another fairly recent game, and one that's been praised up and down by critics and gamers alike. I'm talking about The Walking Dead, both seasons one and season two. Now, The Walking Dead is an important game for a lot of reasons. For starters, it pretty much single-handedly revitalized interest in both point-and-click adventure games and episodic games. It managed to put Telltale Games on the map as a studio to watch, and proved to deliver some of the best choice-driven storytelling since Mass Effect. Admittedly, the core point-and-click gameplay is a little... thin and flimsy, and there are some occasional technical glitches, but the storytelling in The Walking Dead is some of the best around, bar none. Excellent characters and writing are helped along by some fantastic voice acting, and choices that feel like they really matter. It all gives some serious weight to the encounters that most games don't have. Of course, there was also Survival Instinct, but I like to try and just forget that that game ever happened. So let's not ever mention it again. Ever. Thank you. I don't want to get in a fight. You really think he chewed a little girl? Just don't make any sudden moves. And don't piss him off. I'd shoot me. Well, that's a hell of a thing to say. I'm just saying. Well, if it comes to that, I'll shoot him first. Now, before we get on to the number one licensed game of all time, here are some honorable mentions. You think you're doing, Madsen? You dealing without my approval? You're in my cell. You need a blade. You come to me. I said, you're in my cell. And number one on our list is GoldenEye 007 for the Nintendo 64. Now, I don't really think there's anything I can say about this game that hasn't already been said over and over and over by hundreds of different people hundreds of different times. When it was released, it was one of the best first-person shooter games out there. It was one of the best games on the Nintendo 64. was the best James Bond game, was the best licensed game, had some of the best multiplayer, etc, 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 etc. It's all been said over and over and over. You really don't need to hear me yak about it again. But if for some reason this game's importance and quality is somehow still not 100% solidified and beaten over and over into your head, it was good enough that Activision decided to reboot the GoldenEye franchise with a remake of the game on the Wii, which, interestingly enough, did actually happen to be one of the better first-person shooters on the Wii, for what that's worth. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the 10, technically 13 if you count the honorable mentions, best licensed games of all time. If you feel like there's a game that should have made the cut that I forgot about or left out, be sure to let me know in the comments below. 
Be sure to leave a like and favorite if you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'm Aladman98. Thanks for watching. Boing, 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 boing!